All right. My name is Jesse. And if you watched our last video, you know we went over the uh, wooden solar pergola build. And I had mentioned that I had picked up these Canadian solar 385 watt uh, monofacial solar panels um, used on Facebook Marketplace. Um, and they came with these Enphase IQ8 Plus microinverters. And I mentioned that, you know, I was going to try and do some experimenting with these. Just see if I could, uh, you know, offset some use from the pool pump. Um, and yesterday I got it wired up, hooked up, and it works. Uh, I think these things will output, at least in my kind of setup, they're outputting anywhere from 250 to 300 watts um, per uh, 385 watt solar panel. So uh, it's not bad. Um, I'll go over real quick, uh, kind of give you just like a general concept of how these microinverters work. Um, these are primarily used for grid tied applications. So most of the time you're going to see these on a house with a interconnection agreement. I don't have an interconnection agreement, but I feel comfortable kind of wiring this up um, and making sure I don't feed back electricity to the grid. Uh, but if you have an interconnection agreement, then if you sell back some, who cares? Um, you have that, uh, that contract that allows you to do that. But in my case, I don't have an interconnection agreement, so I got to make sure that whatever um, electricity is made by this microinverter, it gets used up right away, either by the pool pump or something else in my house. So uh, these microinverters, in order for them to kind of start outputting uh, 240 volts AC, uh, they have to see the grid. They have to see a connection with the grid. And usually it's 240 volts. So these these microinverters, they have to see 240 volts in order for them to start outputting um, alternating current. Uh, so if you don't have uh, 240 volts that it can recognize, then it's not gonna output. And so the way I have this kind of wired up is my pool pump timer, uh, every time it kicks on, it's gonna show this microinverter that there's a grid connection. And so that allows this to kind of start working and it'll start to output uh, AC power and feed it back to the pool pump. So that's kind of the basics of how these micro inverters work. At least that's kind of my understanding of it. But I don't recommend going this route. Um, I don't recommend you buy these and you know try to offset your pool pump. Uh, and by the way, like um, there's a guy on YouTube who's kind of like pioneered a bunch of these like little experiments. I, I don't know his name, but his YouTube channel is like there's a trick for that. But he's done a bunch of experiments kind of with these micro inverters. I think he's done an air conditioner. He offset air conditioner, um, an irrigation pump. And so I'm just taking the next step and doing a pool pump. Um, but I don't recommend you actually do these, uh, like buy these and try to do this type of setup because in my opinion, it's, it's more expensive. Uh, these are actually quite expensive. I've seen these used for $100 each. And so if they're new, they're probably much more. And plus you need the trunk cables. And I don't know if you have to buy this PV connection kind of uh, port here. But I don't recommend you buy these because this is very expensive. Um, unless you can get these for like dirt cheap or like in my case, I got them with used solar panels, then sure, why not uh, kind of put them to good use. But I always recommend doing what we did in our budget solar power station build, and that's getting an all-in-one inverter, a server rack battery, and a load center. And then you can power your pool pump, mini splits, lights, refrigerators, anything you want in your house. Um, that's going to be the most uh, kind of cost-effective way to go about solar is you get a... Uh, all-in-one inverter, a server rack battery, and a load center, and you can you can go any you can do anything with that almost. These are very limited in what they can do, and they only work when the sun's out. So, um, whereas if you got a load center, a server rack battery, and all-in-one inverter, well, your battery can help you even when the sun's not out. So, um, these are cool, um, and if you can get them for super cheap or free, or you know your friend gives them to you or whatever. Um, it's cool to experiment, experiment with them, but um, I don't recommend going this route. Uh, my route is uh, to go with our budget power station build. And if you want to learn more about how to kind of piece together your own kind of solar power station, your own solar system, um, check out my other videos. You'll get a good idea of how much it costs and what goes into kind of making your own little system. I'm still going to do some more uh, testing with it, but um, that's kind of the, the route I would take if I'm trying to go solar. And, uh, start offsetting some of my my electrical usage in my house so let's get a little closer here into the wiring so you guys can kind of see how it's all wired all right i'll try and walk through the wiring here real fast on this micro inverter this is an enphase iq8 plus micro inverter 
And so what we're gonna look at is the DC input ranges. And in order for this microinverter to output 240 volts, you need a solar panel that has a DC range of 25 to 58 volts. So if we go over here to our solar panel, we're gonna look at the electrical specification sheet. We're gonna look at the VOC and it's 43.9. So it's between 25 and 58. So it's compatible and it's within the parameters and it should work. So right here, we have our kind of DC inputs for the solar. And so I have the negative and the positive coming in right here, and that's these two. Negative and positive, and these negative and positives go to a disconnect down here, and that disconnect is hooked up to the negative and the positive of the solar panel. So the negative and positive of the solar panel are essentially uh, just come in here. There's, it's just in between, there's a disconnect. And so our DC power from the solar panel comes in here to the microinverter. The microinverter converts it to 240 volts AC and it'll shoot that 240 volts AC down this trunk cable here. And um, it's gonna go down, technically it goes down both of these, but um, these microinverters are normally in like a string of like 10 or 20. And so you have like one going to the next microinverter and this one going to the next microinverter. But uh, since I only have one setup, one of these is not actually hooked up to anything. It's, it's kind of just knotted off right here, but the other one does go over here to this juncture box. So we'll come over here and our 240 volts AC comes down these wires here and we're just going to follow it up here, it wraps up and it comes into this junction box. And so we have our black and our red wires and the red wire is just put into this Wago here and that Wago has a white wire and that white wire just continues the circuit. And same with this black wire coming from the trunk cable of the microinverter, it just goes to the Wago here with this black wire. And the black wire and the white wire just continue that circuit down this conduit. And this conduit here just goes all the way down to the ground. That conduit comes up and comes through the backside of the pull pump timer. And those wires coming from the microinverter are see if I can give you a good angle here they are this wire right here but this wire just it kind of wraps around and it goes up into this screw here that says number two so it's this wire right here and it just comes up and meets this screw right here that says number two and then the white wire uh, just wraps around the other side and I just put it in electrical tape but it's this wire here and it's in screw number four and so the way these pumps, pull pump timers work, is you've got these four screws. One, two, three, and four. One and three are your line. Let's see if you could see it. There you go. One and three are the line. And so those have power coming from the electrical panel. And those are always hot. So one and three are always hot. And then two and four, or yeah, one and three are always hot. And then two and four, those are only hot when this pull pump timer switch clicks over. Once the switch clicks over to the on position, then it continues the circuit just two and four. And so one and three are getting power from the electrical panel. And so if we take a look uh, kind of at these Wagos here, I got three wires into this Wago. This Wago is always hot because this middle wire here in this Wago is coming from the electrical panel. And this electrical panel is providing power to this Wago here. And then this Wago sends power up here to power the pull pump timer. And then it's just the same thing with this red one over here. This red wire here is coming straight from the electrical panel and it's applying this Wago here, this three splice Wago with uh, power. And uh, power from this Wago is always hot. And so it comes up here and supplies power to the pull pump timer. And same thing here. So power from the electrical panel comes up this red wire, goes to this Wago, and this Wago sends power here to this screw here, the number three, which is, it's, it's always hot. And lastly, I have um, two wires also hooked up to this kind of three splice Wago. I have a wire here and then I have a wire over here. And so those wires shoot down this little conduit here and they go down into this jun junction box. And I don't know if you could see it, but those black wires come through here and they just make a, a U-turn and they come up and they come right out of this hole here. So I got one here and one back here. And so these Wagos are always hot. So those two wires, uh, those two black wires coming from this Wago and this Wago, they're always hot. And so they're powering this pull pump. Um, this is the liquid tight, and this liquid tight goes straight to the power of the pull pump here. So this pull pump 
doesn't really run off the pull pump timer. It runs all the time based off the settings and the programming that you set in here. And so it's always gonna have power no matter what. Um, it's just that before I had this uh, variable speed pull pump timer, it was a single speed timer. It was a single speed pull pump and that did run off of this pull pump timer. So the only way that my old uh, pull pump would turn on and off was with this kind of setup. But now with these newer variable speeds, you really don't, you really don't need these to be honest, uh, because the the pump has the settings and the programs in there to just turn it on and off by itself. But the, the old school pumps, they, they still use these. But um, what I'm gonna do is uh, configure this to, for the micro inverter to see the grid whenever I set these, the pull pump timer. And so currently this is live right now. So if we look down here, we see that our number one screw here and number three screw right there. So one and three are supplying 240 volts. Oh, shoot. There we go. It's hard to do with one hand, but I could do it. There we go. So one and three, 240 volts. And so this pull pump timer is currently in the off position. So it's off, but one and three are always getting power from the electrical panel. It's getting 240 volts. And so two and four are the load and then there should be no power here. Let me see. So we are now on two and four. And of course it's zero volts. So um, there's, there's, no, there's no grid connection here. And so our grid connection on the screws two and four are hooked up to the end phase microinverter. So if I hit this to the on position, now if we go to two and four, we get 240 volts. And so now that microinverter should see grid connection and in like two or three minutes it should start outputting 240 volts and it'll send that 240 volts straight up these uh, wires here into two and four and it'll start supplying if i had to guess probably like 250 300 volts to help offset this pull pump and this pull pump depending on you know the settings that you have it'll draw anywhere from like 200 watts to like you know 1300 watts and that's just depends on you know how fast you're running it but if that uh and phase microinverter can output, you know, we'll just say 300 watts, you know, it'll offset this pump by 300 watts. And then as soon as, the way I have it is it's gonna turn on at 8 a.m. and it'll turn off at 5 p.m. So uh, once 5 p.m. hits, the timer will turn off. And then our screws two and four here should no longer have 240, there we go, nothing left. So let's uh, turn on the pump and see what we get and see how much we're offsetting. All right, before I turn the pump on, I'm just gonna kind of show real fast that red blinking light here. That's the microinverter looking for the grid. So it's trying to find grid, it can't see grid, so it's not gonna output any, any AC, 240 volts AC. So let's come over here. I'm gonna turn on this pump here. We'll hit the start. All right, our pump is currently on, and a lot of these pumps will actually tell you the speed, the revolutions that you're running at. So the speed right now is 2200 RPMs, and at 2200 RPMs, it uses about 564 watts. So if we come over to our little junction box here, if I put the clamp meter on, hot wire right here we can see how much amperage is being drawn so 2.34 2.34 amps so let's see here 2.34 amps times 204 oops, times 240 volts 561 so 561 and the pump said 564, so it's pretty close. It's drawn about 560 watts. And so let's see what happens when we turn the, the grid on. Let's see. All right, so our red light kind of turned into an orange light, but let's see if we got anything. We got any power coming out. So there's our amp clamp. We put it on this wire here and nothing's coming out 
So usually this take a couple minutes, so we'll give it a couple minutes and then we'll see we'll see what we get. It is currently 119. We'll see how long that takes. All right, it is currently 123, so it took about almost four minutes. And so now this leg was, um, it was not reading anything, zero amps. But now we clamp it and we get 1.07. So we're getting 1.07 amps. So let's go to our calculator here. 1.07 times 240 so 256 watts is what it's pushing through so let's go to our pull pump all right so I hooked this up to our pull pump timer and we were originally drawing two point I think three amps and now we're drawing 1.03 so it definitely offset about one amp All right, so it's drawing one amp right now, 1.7 amps, but the microinverter is feeding in also like an amp and some change. So let's see what happens when we turn the grid off. So if I turn this off, the microinverter should stop seeing the grid and it'll stop pushing that amperage in. So let's see what we draw. All right, so the microinverter stopped outputting and it's back to pulling 2.3, 2.3 amps. All right, that's gonna wrap this video up. Um, it's a cool little experiment. Again, I don't recommend you do that if you're trying to offset solar or offset electricity. Uh, I recommend, you know, get an all-in-one inverter, uh, load center, and a battery, a server rack battery. And you can do that for pretty dirt cheap now. And you should be able to do anything you want, like power pool pumps, anything inside your house. That's the, the route I always recommend to go, but these were a cool little fun experiment. And um, these five solar panels here are hooked up to that mini split, but I live in Arizona and during the winter time, uh, you really don't use air conditioning or heating um, because it doesn't get cold enough here uh, that you would want to use the heater, or at least not, not where I live. Um, but these four or five solar panels um, aren't really being used during the winter time. So, and uh, MPPTs on my main system, the 12,000 XP, uh, they're not at capacity, but I'd have to do a bunch of rewiring and moving stuff around in order to um, kind of make use of these five solar panels. But what I can do, is just during the winter time is just kind of reconfigure this rewire this so it doesn't power the mini split you know i just use two or three micro inverters and it'll offset the pool pump um, which runs eight ten twelve hours a day so um for my kind of setup uh i found a good use for them uh, if you guys have any questions let me know um i always kind of read the comments try to reply to you guys as quick as i can um any suggestions anything in particular you guys want to see let me know i'll I'll try and put it out there. All right, I think that's gonna wrap this one up. I will catch you guys on the next one.